And I'll be sharing my screen. So let's start with the brief introduction of computer organization and architecture. Okay, kita ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, meron na po. Meron, meron na. So, we have read introduction, computer organization, and architecture. Zayan, may mic. Check natin si Zayan. So, dalawa na lang wala. Okay. So, introduction to computer organization and architecture. So, more or less, this will just uh, define some terms and maybe a brief introduction of what is computer organization. Check out. Now, uh, sorry with the uh, low graphics, but more or less, uh, with this picture, we can already view the, uh, the relationship and maybe the differences between the computer organization and architecture, and especially the related to So here, more or less, the other one is about high-level software or about application of software. And at the core, maybe your low-level hardware or the hardware. And in between is actually some sort of an interface. So this will only react, this can only be uh, acting and reacting to each other with the use of an interface. So there should be an interface. Just like, for example, we as users, we can only uh, we can only use an application because of the user interface. So that is where we interact. Okay. So the same is true with this. Oh, sorry. Same is true with this. The the uh, software and the hardware will actually interact with the use of the interface. Actually, the interface is usually called the architecture. So yan yung parang tinag architecture. Now here are some differences. Or necessarily differences, but some are the relationships siguro. Computer architecture is concerned with the way hardware components are connected together to form a computer system. While computer organization is concerned with the structure and behavior of a computer system as seen by the users or more on the structure. It acts as the interface, as I've said a while ago, the architecture is the interface between hardware and software. So while the organization, it deals with the components of a connection in a system. Computer architecture helps us to understand the functionalities of a system. And computer organization tells us how exactly all the units in system are arranged and interconnected. So you'll be seeing that more as we go on with our slide. For computer architecture, a programmer can view architecture in terms of instructions, addressing modes, and registers. That's why later on, uh, these are some of the topics that we will be discussing. So instructions, addressing modes, registers. And whereas organization express the realization of an architecture. So an organization is actually uh, from this, but it's based on an architecture. So when we create computer components or whatever, yung mga organization yan, it is actually uh, based on architecture. We just don't create uh, computer components or we just don't create computers or maybe processors. Na basta basta. If we create processor, it should be following some sort of an architecture. Okay, so while designing a computer system, architecture is considered first. And organization is done in the basis. Yeah, so, kung meron na yung architecture, then the organization is done on the basis of the architecture. Computer architecture deals with the high-level design issues, and computer organization deals with the low-level design issues. So more kasi on uh, the hardware portion yung organization. Then natatapan yung slide ko. Yeah, di ko mabasa. <laughs> ah, di ko na mabasa. Kasi simple lang mo na yung yeah. 
Then architecture involves log logic, so instruction sets, addition mode, data types, class optimization. So actually, so you might not think that this, this will be our topics, or these are the topics that I will be assigning to you later. And organization involves physical components, you can design others, signals, and peripherals. Uh, in this subject, we'll be touching more on architecture and just a little bit of organization. organization, but it will be more on architecture. Again, computer organization and architecture. So computer architecture refers to those attributes of a system visible to a programmer. Or put in another way, those attributes that have direct impact on the logical execution of a program. So examples are, let's say, how are, uh, what are the, for example, you have registers, how do, uh, how are memory stored inside, or how are variables stored inside memory, etc. So computer organization refers to the operational units and their interconnections that realize the architectural specification. So again, the computer organization realized the architectural specification. So architectural attributes examples are instruction sets. So yeah, and then the number of bits used to represent various data types, input output mechanism and addressing techniques. Organizational attributes include hardware details transparent to programmers such as control singles interface between the computer and peripherals and the memory technologies so relationship between architecture and organization is very close changes in technology not only influence organization but also results in the introduction of more powerful and more complex architecture now if we're going to look at this uh, we can say that teams architecture Although it becomes more powerful, more complex, pero ang binabago na yung core, alus hindi binabago yung architecture. Okay? Uh, the reason for that is, for example, lang, uh, kung binago mo yung architecture, magbabago, um, marami ang magbabago because the hardware is, again, uh, more or less based doon sa architecture. If you change the architecture, yung mga dating software, will not anymore be compatible with, for example, dun sa bagong architecture na yan. Okay? Pero, so usually, noon, kumari, uh, we, we have only 16-bit processor, then naging 32-bit. So, may mababago sa architecture ng concept, pero yung base, yung core noon, it's still there. That's why uh, yung mga 8-bit na application, for example, can still run in 16-bit. O ngayon, 16-bit na, naging 32, 64, diba? 64-bit na yata mga processors. So, yung 32-bit still runs or uh, can still be executed in. Kasi the architecture, hindi masyadong nagbabago yung architecture, especially yung core. Nag nagiging more powerful na, naradagdagan. Pero, so, pero yung sa hardware, usually, maraming nagbabago sa hardware. Maraming nagbabagong processor, for example. Okay. So, I don't enjoy. Okay, so there can be there are changes with architecture. It becomes more powerful, but again, the core maybe is not the, uh, that changed. And uh, as compared with in computer business organization, so in computer organization there can be changes, but still, if they change this, they're still following. The architecture, so your architecture and the basis. So organization is the hierarchy of the layers: software, low-level hardware, operating system, etc. So some sort of the hierarchy. Actually, yung tinatayo ko nila the image that I've shown you a while ago, yung uh, concentric circles. That's already some sort of the organization and problems of how its layer is partitioned and implemented. So architecture describes the interface between the hardware and the software. So interface is a shared boundary, so the boundary between two layers, in which two components of a computer system exchange information. So architecture, again, focus is, is 
or the structure and behavior of the computing system. And ISA define everything a machine language programmer needs to know in order to program a computer. So, yeah, and then what an ISA defines differs to ISAs in general. ISAs define the supported data types, what state there is, such as main memory registers and the semantics, such as memory consistency, addition modes, instruction set, etc. So, um, these things here are more or less the topics that will be discussed in this subject. That's why, as I said a while ago, uh, we're going to discuss a few on computer architecture, but mostly more on a uh, computer organization. I said uh, a few on computer organization, but mostly on computer architecture. Now, these are the layers, computer system layers. So this is the organization, organization itself. So we have the application program. An application program is developed by putting uh, several algorithms together. And algorithms are written in a particular programming language. And so this, this part is the software part. And this language is, of course, executed by some sort of a microarchitecture or you know, microcomputer processors. Processor is composed of circuits and devices. So in between the hardware and the software is the architecture. So the instruction set architecture. Now let's again take a have a different look at the layers. Transformation between layers. So how do we solve the problem using a computer? So we have a problem. So uh, again, systematic sequence of transformation between layers of abstraction. So, yeah. so if we have a problem, so how do we solve the problem? We have a software design, and in designing, we choose the algorithms and the data structures that we're going to use to solve the problem. That's why we have to now the algorithm. And the algorithm, okay, so we can do this by choosing the programming language to express your algorithm design. And then the program, if you have the program, we have to compile, interpret this. And actually in creating a compiler, interpreter should be based on a certain architecture. So we have the instruction set architecture here. And that architecture is of course executed by the processor. So the processor design choose structures to implement the ISA. So we have the micro micro architecture. Then the, this architecture, the microprocessor, is actually composed of logic circuit design. So these are another logic circuit design. These are gates, the low level circuits to implement components, among others, etc. Then the circuits. It's called process engineering and publication to develop and manufacture the lowest level components in devices. So these are the layers. And uh, each layer, if you're going up, is an abstraction of the previous layer. What do you mean by abstraction? Uh, please. Wait. Okay, so I'm back. So if you're going up, it's a different layer. And if you go up, each layer is actually an abstraction of the previous layer. What do I mean by abstraction? Uh, simply, what we mean by abstraction is something to make this, the previous one, the, uh, the lower layer, easier. So your devices so it become circuits, so it's easier to use circuits. And then instead of just circuits, we combine them, we have the microarchitecture, you know, microprocessor. Okay, and then we have the instruction set. So the instruction set, so instead of using the instruction set, instead of using 
for example, assembly language programming, we just use maybe a higher level programming language. And higher level language programming, so to solve problems, just can make use of algorithms. And then the algorithms can solve the problem. So we go up, each layer is an abstraction of the previous layers. Again, when you say abstraction, we are trying to make the previous one, the lower level, easier. Simplifying the previous layer. So uh, I think this is already what I've said a while ago. Let's just read the problem statement stated using natural language. So maybe ambiguous or imprecise because that's in natural language. And then, so to solve that, we use algorithm. So the algorithm is a step, step procedure guaranteed to finish. So definiteness, effective computability, finiteness. So these are the algorithm. And then the algorithm can be expressed in programming language. So express the algorithm using a computer language. So usually in a high level language or sometimes in a low level language, but most probably will be, most programmers will be using high level language. Unless you consider C language maybe as a low level, because some consider C language as a, some sort of a low level, but not very low. <laughs> uh, it depends on who, uh, who's, uh, maybe it depends on who's looking at or who's the standard of those who are doing the leveling of programming language. Then we have the ISA, which specifies a set of instructions the computer can perform, the data types are using mode. And then microarchitecture, the detailed organization of a processor implementation, different implementation of a single ISA. Logic circuits, so combine basic operations to realize microarchitecture. So many different ways to implement a single function of the devices, properties, or materials for the So let's proceed to the next one. Structure and function. So let's discuss this one. The structure is, uh, you know, the way in which the components are interrelated. So more or less, we're talking about some sort of organization. So function is the operation of each individual component as part of the structure. So the four basic functions of a computer is data processing, data storage, data movement, and control. So these are the four basic functions. I hope you can see the image. It's quite small, but here, operating environment. Uh, me, myself, cannot read. Operating environment, so source and destination of data. So this is a source. So this is where data is uh, entered and data will also be uh, displayed or outputted from this point. So if this is your computer and probably these are your input devices and your output devices. So if the data moves in, then what will be the component that is in charge in moving the data, of course, we have the data movement apparatus. Data movement apparatus. And then the data movement apparatus. So, but what is giving instructions to this data movement apparatus? The data movement apparatus is, of course, being controlled by some sort of a control mechanism. So, you notice this one is at the middle. It's a control mechanism. So an in-control mechanism, just some sort of the uh, boss. Okay? He actually dictates what will be done by the components. So if somebody enters data, the data movement apparatus will be moving that data, of course, through the instruction of the control mechanism, and will be instructing that data maybe to be stored in a data storage facility. It can be the RAM or it can be the disk. And if, for example, you want to pass that data, the data mechanism will tell the data storage to, re to retrieve the data and then process the data. Once the data is processed, the output will be, again, controlled by the mechanism, uh, will be dictated by the mechanism to be moved maybe towards the output device. But it will only move to the output device 
because of the data movement apparatus. So more or less, this is the functionality. Again, if we input data, the movement of data will be taken care of the data movement apparatus. The storage is a data storage facility with a passive, but all of these three are actually controlled by a control mechanism. Okay. So I thought this is the same, uh, the same with the image a while ago, but uh, with different visual representation. So if this is a computer, we have the input, so it moves parang may conveyor here, so, yan yung data movement, diba? para we're going to look at this as some sort of a factory, we have some sort of a conveyor here to move the data from the input to the memory and data path, yeah, this is now the processor, it passes the food for example, it passes that data, then we'll back to memory and then from memory to the output device. But who is instructing them? The control mechanism. So that's how more or less a computer works. That's the organization of, or how more or less uh, computer, you know, computer organization. So it seems to uh, just a more complex drawing, but still the same with the previous example. So we have the keyboard, then we have the keyboard controller, then the data. I'm uh, sorry, I cannot read it. <laughs> System, what's this? I cannot read anymore. But if you're going to look at this, so more or less, we have here the input output devices. We have the memory, then memory mechanism, we have the processor, and the processor, of course, control uh, includes a control mechanism and also a controller, Jan. And, and so we have the data movement, the storage, and then from storage towards the output devices. And of course, this is controlled by different controllers. So we have the IO controller, the CPU is a controller itself, keyboard controller, etc. Uh, again, let's take a look at the structure. Now, let's say that this is our computer. So I'm sorry with the drawing. Um, ito, pero it's not, uh, here. Uh, so this is the computer and a computer we have peripherals connected to the computer and also communication lines connected to the computer so both of these are some sort of input and output of communication lines and peripherals so inside the computer we have storage and processing now let us if we go to expand this let us expand this portion. It will be something like this. So this is now the computer. And inside the computer, you have the main memory. So that's your RAM. You have the input, output, uh, apparatus. And all of this, the data will be moving from this to this to this using the system bus. And of course, we have here the CPU. That's why you know this, this one is connected to the tree because this is in charge of moving the data from the main memory, to IO, and to the CPU. So uh, again, this one, we, we just expanded this. We just, uh, we try to drill in, drill in. We just try to drill in here, and then this is now the result, okay? Now let's drill in further. So this is now the CPU. So, oh no, I'm running out of time. So this is the computer. If we drill in the CPU, this is now the components of the CPU. We have the arithmetic logic unit, registers, integral bus, and control unit. So more or less this part might be discussed during your uh, reports later. And the control unit, so we have created the control unit. If we expand the control unit, this is now more or less the contents of the control unit. We have the sequencing logic, control unit registers and decoders, and control memory. If we expand this further, ah, wala na pala. <laughs> so uh, that's it. So the computer, if we expand the computer, it's composed of IO, 
main memory system based on CPU. We expand the CPU, it's composed of the various arithmetic logic unit, control unit, and the internal bus also. Again, the internal bus is in charge of moving the data from the registry to the ALU to ALU, etc. So that's why it's called the bus. So it is in charge of moving data. And then the control unit is composed of the following sequence logic, control unit, which is the encoders, and control. So the four main structural components, the central passing unit controls the operation of the computer and performs its data passing functions. So I'm going to let you know that. Main memory stores data, of course, you know that. I.O. moves data between the computer and its external environment. System interconnection, some mechanism that provides for communication among the CPU, main memory, and I.O. So the example of this is a system bus. So the data, uh, moving data from one component to another. Control unit controls the operation of the CPU and hence the computer, and hence the computer. So, and it's some control. Arithmetic logic unit performs the computer's data processing functions. And registers provide storage internal to the CPU, and we'll learn more of this as we go on. CPU interconnection, some mechanisms that provides for communication among the control unit, ALU, and registers. So, it's yung bus doon sa loob ng CPU. Okay. So, more or less, that's it for my, uh, my okay. yeah. so more or less, that's for the uh, introduction to computer organization. And as I've said, uh, more or less, the topics that I'll be assigning to you will be more on architecture, 80%, or 85% will be more on architecture. Okay? So I, I have only around a few more minutes for that. Okay, so if uh, we can now go back to our group chat so that I can be assigned, uh, will be assigning to you more or less the topics that we will be, uh, the topics that you will be reporting or uh, sharing in this course okay so thank you very much for listening thank you